Okay, so um, I'm gonna show you on me and on George, I'm gonna start with the deltoid first um, and just sort of show you uh, the uh, origins for uh, deltoid. So deltoid will be represented by the yellow muscle here and um, deltoid is gonna have the origin from the uh, spine of the scapula and then it's gonna come around to the acromion process and then it is gonna have um, an origin along this lateral clavicle. And then it comes down, again, that cap over the shoulder, which I've got going here as well. And it forms a cap over the shoulder as it goes into its insertion, which is at this deltoid tuberosity. So um, when we look at the uh, deltoid, um, it's going to, when you have the humerus, all right, in that more anatomical position, the deltoid tuberosity is going to be right between where your elbow is and your shoulder. So on anybody, right? It's amazing. No matter how tall they are, how short they are, it's always going to be halfway between the shoulder and the elbow would be the deltoid tuberosity. All right. So um, you have, when we remove this, which I'm going to do, what? Look at those. Oh, oh, uh, no. That's amazing. And wait, and wait. I just want to also point out, I'll go back to the actions showing them on me here, but um, also too, this was the, this represents the upper trapezius. And when you pull away the upper trap, that's going to be where you find your supraspinatus. So these are the rotator cuffs we'll talk about in just one second. Uh, in terms of the actions, I'm going to use me because this usually works out a little bit better. But notice that because there's all these different fiber directions, you've got anterior, you've got middle, you've got posterior fibers of deltoid. Um, the anterior fibers, they are going to, and remember the insertion, the deltoid tuberosity being pulled towards the origin up here at the lateral clavicle. So it's able to do flexion. Right? It's able to do, when it pulls in a different plane, it can do internal rotation, all right? And when we look at the middle fibers, oh, I forgot, and horizontal adduction, these anterior fibers, when I bring my humerus up into 90 degrees of flexion, and then I take and I bring that humerus towards the midline, the insertion is coming closer to the origin. In fact, you can kind of see here, it's kind of getting a little bunched up as if the fibers in there would be pulling and shortening the sarcomeres to get that uh, action to occur, all right? So flexion, horizontal adduction, and internal rotation is gonna be the anterior fibers. If we go to the posterior fibers, the exact opposite. So we're gonna do, this, this muscle group can do extension, and you can kind of see it bunching up here because that would be shortening, extension. It can do, don't want to hit George off his stand, horizontal abduction, which is again, starting the humerus into 90 degrees of flexion and then bringing it away from the midline in the horizontal plane, that's horizontal abduction, insertion coming closer to origin. And then last but not least, oh yes, external rotation of the shoulder. All right, so if I take this and you can picture the humerus now rotating externally, bringing the insertion closer to the origin. And then you've got these middle fibers, which are in a great position where when they pull, they're gonna be able to do that plain abduction. All right, remember this is abduction. And so, and when you do this, this is horizontal abduction. Whenever they put the word horizontal in front of something that changes how that action is going to be. So that's your deltoid. These are my shoulders. And again, 
it's not 100% optimal. It's okay. I have worked very, very, very hard at this. And you see, I, I'm using way too much effort. That's way too much effort. So that's what's not optimal about it. The mechanics are optimal, relatively speaking. The, the, the level of effort is way too much. But that's because I have rotator cuff tears and labral tears. That's why. Now, if you look here, upward rotation. So, th so you see that line there? That's a lat attachment coming, coming there. The reason why you know this is not great either, you see that big hollow in both my shoulders? That's because of my rotator cuff and labral tears. It creates this big hollow back here because the, the humeral head is flopping around too much in the socket. Not flopping around. It's, it's translating too far forward in the socket. But you see the upward rotation. And more importantly, when my arms come back down, you don't see a big crash. So now I'm going into abduction, and this is the one where, where you where you will really pick up the crashing of the scapula. I'll show you what that looks like next. So again, I've trained this over and over and over and over again, and this is the best I can get it for right now. Hopefully I can get it better than this, but again, it's okay for my issues. The downside of overhead pressing, I mean, the plus side is it trains the shoulder complex and the core. The downside is it jacks your client's rotator cuff up when they don't have great range of motion. Now, how do you modify this? Many trainers will say, well, I just have my clients retract more. So this is me retracting more. And um, you get that face, my bitmoji. Told you, it looks just like me, maybe a little more handsome. This is me retracting more. So my elbows are straight out to the side completely in the frontal plane, but it requires me to jack my chest up and, it, and I'm jacking my shoulder up and it does not feel good on my shoulder. And that's only 10 pounds that will jack your client's shoulders up. Don't have them do it unless they really want to do it. However, just tell them that there are, are side effects of doing that. Now, if you need further evidence, watch this. Remember my range of motion before. It was about 150 to 160 degrees. Use your assessments. This is me doing a 40 pound, which is pretty light for me, chest press, incline press. Doing it the way most people do it, doing it the way I used to do it when I was doing 90 pound dumbbell overhead presses. And again, super easy for me to do it that way. This is why it's so hard to change your client's habits, the ones that really like to lift weights. Watch my range of motion. That's, that was 10 repetitions, one set. And already, like, look how decreased my range of motion is on one set of 10 repetitions, not even with my max weight. So now, remember the scapular plane we talked about. We don't want to teach our clients how to lift straight out to their side initially. Use the scapular plane because that's the plane the scapula is in. It's about 30 degrees to the front. So you're better and safer training in that range of motion if you are going to do overhead press. So here's how you would modify it in the standing shoulder press. So this is the 30 degrees of, eh, actually probably more 45. So you can do overhead press with a limited range of motion, but realize that you just have to limit the range of motion. And then it's crazy hard on your scapular stabilizers. So it's a great exercise for scapular stabilizers, but it's crazy hard. I'm using 20 pounds there, so I can do a lot more, but I can't do it well. So 20 pounds is still crazy hard because I'm really controlling my scapular plane and my scapula in that scapular plane. And I'm not allowing the shoulders, the weights to come back down to my shoulders. So I'm not compressing back down my shoulders. Now you can also use an incline bench if you have access to one. So this is how you would. So there's my shoulder range of motion. So that's where the bench is positioned. And that's ultimately how I, I would do my shoulder slash modified overhead press. So that's just to show you that, that that's my good range of motion. Now I'll set myself up before I grab my dumbbells. So I would have my clients grab their dumbbells. Don't hand them to them, grab them themselves, maintain their alignment, sit down, lean back, use a towel for you know the head support, and then use your scapular plane to press overhead. Much safer, much more controlled, and it won't jack shoulders up. So good way to start to help your clients once they've earned the right to get to overhead press. And then again, check range of motion. Your range of motion will not lie. It will tell you whether you've done something good 
or something not so great. I think I check range of motion here real quick, just to make sure that my range of motion is maintained, just to make sure my shoulder feels good. And yeah, it's back to where it was, it's maintained, so it's all good in the hood, even though I jacked it up a few moments prior to that. <laughs>